Head W, Ministry of Transport, Mr. Saktiandi Supat. Just take a first cut. Mr. Chairman, may I take my three cuts together? No, just take the first cut first. first cut. Mr. Chairman, I beg to move that the total sum to be allocated for head W of the estimates be reduced by $100. As we hopefully look to emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic year, it is timely for us to take stock of the lessons we have learned from the supply chain disruptions amidst the COVID-19 pandemic and how businesses are responding to the same. This will prepare us to bolster our hub status as a reliable and resilient transport node to the world. First, there is a general consensus that digitalization is required to mitigate the risks of supply chain disruptions. To utilize our limited resources productively, we have already been focusing on digitalization before the pandemic. But other larger and resource-rich countries will also see the same need now, whether it is using AI, and machine learning to decrease dependency on human labour in critical parts of the supply chain, or digitising the cumbersome paperwork that accompanies the cargo flowing through the chain. So I welcome the launch of the Supply Chain 4.0 initiative to help small businesses scale up on digital and automated solutions to make supply chains more resilient and secure. We need to think about how we can continue to stay ahead as a transport node of choice. Second, the unpredictability of supply chain disruptions has led businesses to move from just-in-time to a just-in-case inventory strategy. As businesses start to keep a fair level of buffer beyond the expected inventory needs, they are also looking for integrated short-term storage solutions in addition to the efficient processing and clearance of goods at our ports. This creates a conundrum for land scarce Singapore where storage space at our ports or elsewhere is only available at a premium. Perhaps the government can consider how we can use idle state land to support this as part of our more general plan to move our seaport westwards in coming years. Third, we must remember that supply chain disruptions are a global problem and no one country is going to resolve it themselves. So collaboration is key. Even as we compete, we must recognise that sharing knowledge and solutions will improve the interoperability across a network of ports and enhance our resilience and reliability as a regional transport solution. Through this pandemic, I'm glad that we have succeeded in developing and sharing safe crew change protocols with fellow International Maritime Organization member states and enhance our Digital Oceans initiative to shape and harmonize global data standards. We must continue these efforts to export knowledge. How does the Ministry intend to further enhance Singapore as a reliable and resilient transport node? Mr Chairman, next card. The question is that the total sum to be allocated for HEAT W of the estimates be reduced by $100. Mr. Sakti and Supra. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Today, most of the world are talking about smart transportation or intelligent transportation systems. We are no different. Under our Smart Mobility 2030 Master Plan launched in 2014, we aim to optimize transport systems and enhance commuter travel experience across Singapore with the latest developments in transport technologies. Time wise, we are also at the 50% mark. Could the Ministry share an update on our progress? What is the Ministry's plan and strategy to embrace, test bed and utilise new and advanced technologies to benefit commuters in Singapore or even globally? Putting aside autonomous and green vehicles, one of the centrepieces in the smart mobility vision is to leverage on data and analytics to optimise the use of transport system. Besides collecting information and analysing them at the back end, it is equally important to push such information to individual commuters so that we are able to influence our user behaviour in real time. This is not new. We have long been informing motorists of road conditions through road broadcasts and expressway monitoring and advisory systems or EMAS electronic signboards. However, rapid improvements in technology means there are now faster, more efficient ways to push information to commuters. We can now look to apps and websites on our mobile phone for bus arrival timings from SBS Transit app, ERP rates from the My Transport app, and road conditions from one motoring. But these are only as useful as we can get commuters to use them. What is the utilisation of feedback on these information apps? Is there an opportunity to centralise information on a single user-friendly platform now that a global chip shortage has delayed the rollout of the next-gen ERP to the latter half of 2023? For example, at the usage of PCN level, we can roll out a PCN cycling and pedestrian density real-time crowd level map akin to the NPARC's safe distance website, where it helps users avoid or navigate with understanding it is a busy 
PCN peak period, for example. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman, second cut. We are seeing this exciting transport evolutions uh, as we see transport industry facing a, a sea change globally. International climate change objectives have intensified the race to decarbonize transport, which accounts for around one fifth of global carbon emissions. Technological advancements are driving the evolution of smart and intelligent transport systems. We are seeing these exciting transport evolutions in Singapore as well, including the Hyundai EV plant that's coming up, the commercial air taxi services that's coming up as well. So such te uh, smart technology can complement our transport system by providing last mile connectivity where required, such as to our islands. At the same time, COVID-19 pandemic has also shaken up the transport industry over the past two years as transport routes and norms are disrupted. While our seaport continued to post stellar results despite the pandemic, the same cannot be said about our air transport and supporting services industry, which has bled thousands of jobs since the pandemic broke. What is the projected job creation outlook in the transport sector, be it air, land or maritime? And what are the emerging areas and what future jobs will be there and how can we encourage and develop local talent to join these sectors early on? Thank you.